Mr. George Farah, the guru is here. Hi, George. How are you? How are you, my brother? How are you? Fine, fine. Hello guys, how are you? I hope everyone is good right there. So today we are going to start the official interviews for the Amateur Olympia Mumbai, India. And I can't ask a better way to start the official interviews. Why? Because the legend, the myth, the ultimate pro creator from the base to the highest level, Mr. George Farah, the guru is here. Hi George, how are you? How are you my brother? How are you? Fine, fine. So uh, first of all, uh, the very first question that I asked you when I met you, how is your health right now? Perfect, perfect. God's, you know, it's a blessing, man. You know, people don't understand that universe is such a strong place. And when you have the mind, you know what I mean? Nothing is impossible. Especially when you have all those positive vibe from so many people from all over the world. Send me prayer and all different religion. It was amazing. It was like heart touching. So it kept me strong. It kept me going. So I'm 100% cured. Prayers never go in vain. <laughs> never. And, they never go in vain. Uh, so, George, uh, this will be a little, a good interview actually. Uh, so, I will start from the question, from where the beginning of George Farah starts. Where the George Farah came to the ultimate scene. Well, you know, George Farah has always been into bodybuilding because what happened is I was in, in torn, you know, uh, war in Lebanon growing up there. It was really bad. Uh, I lost a lot of members of my families. So the only thing kept me really alive and staying away from all those, you know, uh, carrying machine guns at young age and stuff is joining the gym. You know what I mean? And I went to the gym and it was... Uh, really good place to get away from all that bombardment and all that stuff so it gave me a little different aspect because in the place it's so sad that you know how government they kind of like you know brainwash the people to follow certain religion or certain cult or whatever and it, 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 it kill each other over this so i found out in the, in the gym that doesn't matter what's your religion muslim christian catholic sikh hindu it doesn't matter, man. We're all like brother and iron. And it kind of like gave me a different you know, perspective on life. And it made me really enjoy it more. So that's, that's why I stuck to it. And that's why I love it. And, you know, and that's why we're here for the sport we all love. You know what I mean? Because it did save my life and save many of my friends' life. That staying away from all that, you know, other trash. Okay. Uh, just as we say, humanity is the basic religion. Unbelievable. You said it, man. And uh, George, please uh, tell us about your educational background. Well, you know, a lot of people don't know, but I, I did some chemistry growing up. Uh, it's funny, I started with the electronic and I had a bachelor's degree in electronic. And all of a sudden from there, after being shot and stuff, my whole life just took a different route. I started a nutrition. And as a matter of fact, I was trying to finish my schooling uh, before I got the cancer about you know three years ago and I'm like oh my god I can't believe it it's like I never always like you know it, always something always some obstacle in my life but thank God right now I went back and uh, I've been really studying hard and uh, you, you know I'm getting my doctor degree in two years you know so uh, 20 you know 2022 <laughs> I'll be graduating, so it's it's really good to do something, you know. So, and I'm doing alternative medicine because this is what really saved my life. It's my mind and brain, and with my nutritional background, you know, it's gonna be a blast, man, to be able to take people and help them even more now, you know, than ever before. So, yesterday uh, we discussed the topic. Allow the sorry. Yesterday we discussed the topic of longevity in bodybuilding and no one knows it better than this man because the prime example of longevity is Dexter Jackson and he's the mastermind behind Dexter Jackson. So George, what is your take on the longevity aspect of bodybuilding? You know, it's, it's a lot of people, I'm going to tell you what happened. You know, bodybuilding, it's an amazing sport, you know, 
because it's called body building. You so you're building your body. You don't stay where you're at. You know, the problem is a lot of people took it the wrong way. A lot of people, especially like I see in India, they're just using so much hormone and so much stuff that it's really not a healthy way anymore. You know, bodybuilding should be about longevity, man. Bodybuilding should be about, you know, the reason why you're working out is to live longer, to make yourself look better. You, you know what I mean? All about, so sadly, a lot of people, they really took it to the next level. You know, I don't mind, like I said, I'm not gonna be the one who like tell you, well, you know, I never took steroids. No, I did, but you know what I did? I always checked my blood work. I always consulted with a doctor. I always made sure everything is perfect. I don't just take, you know, thousands and thousands of milligrams like those young guys are doing. You know, bodybuilding is about, like I said, building your body, building your mind, being smart about what you eat, what to put in your body, because at the end, what I said to you before, you know, this body is temple from God. God gave us that temple, so we need to take care of it. Just like we tell people, don't drink, don't smoke, don't do drugs. Guess what? Bodybuilding is the same thing. Don't eat fat, don't eat fried food. Stay away from sugar, people, because sugar is the number one cause if people getting old too quick. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, you know, and what happened with me is like, bodybuilding kept me healthy until I stopped competing, you know, and because I was shot before and I have the lead left inside me and I start eating sugar again and I'm not competing and I'm not taking care of my diet, I'll be the first one to admit it. I think that's how the cancer grew in my body. But then when I found out how bad the cancer is, and after they only give me 17% chance, I said, I don't believe in chances. I believe, like I said before, you know, and longevity and, and God and the prayer and the positive. And, and I took all this and not only that I used it on myself to beat cancer, to live, you know what I'm saying? But I really, really want to tell people, man, stay away from junk food, especially sugar. And the same thing, like I've been, preaching to everybody and one of them is Dexter. I always told him, Dexter, you gotta stay away from, yeah, but I like junk. I said, but you know what? The junk for you, Dexter, it's not sugar and I like that. The junk for Dexter is he like to eat green beans and stuff and cooked home. That's not junk, you guys, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, but when you, when you start eating a lot of sugary stuff, a lot of stuff, and that's why if you look at Dexter, Dexter's body looked like he's 20 years of age, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And not only Dexter, I have so many people. I have a 78 years old guy. I, I mean, it's mind boggling. People look at him, they think he's in his 60s because he look amazing and he never skip a beat. My dad is 84, my dad's still doing push-ups and pull-ups. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I like, you know, what I learned is I'm paying it forward and trying to teach people. So. Don't think it's, it's, it's anything in this world is impossible when you put your mind into it, you know what I'm saying? Every dream can become reality if you are willing to give it 100%. But 100% being healthy, that means 100% staying away from all the poisonous that a lot of those big companies are putting out there for us to eat, you know, and, and to make us sick. So we gotta be very careful. Yeah. That's what longevity to me. Perfect. And the one most admirable thing about this man is he trains the athletes from very basic amateur level to the highest level. I have seen very rare people. Sometimes coaches pick up only the elite level of athletes. But what I love about George is taking athletes from the very beginning. I hope, uh, George, how many athletes, how many of your amateur athletes are competing right here? 40. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, I couldn't sleep. I haven't been sleeping. But so you know what? It's, it's a 40 blessing. 40 guys, 40 plus guys are competing under the guidance of Mr. George Farah in Amateur Olympia, Mumbai. This man is pure legend. <laughs> and now I also want to introduce uh, Biki Baji. Biki, please, please come sit next to me. Uh, Here's a prime example before you say, when I met Biki, he was 19 years old, 60 kg, fat kid, okay? Now, mind you, at that time I had Kai Green, I have Branch Warren, who just won the Arnold Classic twice and stuff. And Biki goes, sir, I wanna work with you, I wanna work. I said, Biki, of course, no problem. You know what I mean? Well, I just have a little, you know, waiting list. I said, but I'll put you, your name there. But you know what? He became like a little brother. And we, we had like, 
he listened to me. Like I told him, Vicky, we do this show, but not this show. We don't we don't want to rush it. And that's why he only three he did only three shows and he turned professional. You know what I mean? And that's what I like my people to believe in me. You know, because sometimes people they, they tell you, well, I want to turn pro, I want to turn. They think because I'm taking their money, they don't want to stay another year or whatever. I'm like, dude, it's not about the money. You're not ready. I just don't want you to do this show. You know what I'm saying? Like even here, many people from my guys, you know, like almost all my guys are in the top five. I think I have what three winning the shows or they won already. So, but a couple of guys, I told them not to compete, but you know what? They're like, no, coach, let me try it, let me try it. And guess what? They don't belong, you know what I mean? But not because you won your state or you won your area, that means you belong on a big stage like this. So you need to take, you need to be patient. And that's why I love about Vicky. And how, how are you, the, sir? And how's the preparation of Vicky Paji's pro debut are going on? Listen, Vicky is like a machine. Vicky remind me of The Rock. Seriously. When I work with Dwayne Johnson, you know, we were getting ready for Hercules. Okay? This guy, this is no joke, he called me and he said, George, what do you think about those Altoids? You know the Altoids? Mentos. They're Mentos. You, you know, they, I said, you know, they're okay. He sa I said, but be careful. He goes, but they're sugar free. I said, I know, that's why. Because you sent me the wrapper and be careful because they can cause a problem in your stomach. You know what I mean? He said, okay, okay, you know, and somebody called him. So we hang up and literally five minutes later, he sent me a picture and they're in the garbage. You see what I'm saying? And this is The Rock. He can do whatever he wants. You know, yeah. same thing with Kai Green. You know, that's why people, they become so successful. Not because they do it 99%, because they do it 100 and some percent. And that's how Vicky. Vicky will not steer off his diet. Like, I never seen a kid like this. And that's why the first national show he did, he turned pro. You see what I'm saying? And it, and it showed. As soon as he walked on the stage, all the judges were like, wow, he's in shape. You know what I mean? And, and this, is, this is what I like, man, about my guys. And in, in, in any, any coach, in, in any good coach, that he doesn't care just about you know, taking the people's money, he loves it when he see his client, his athlete, as following 100%. Because now, you're more than willing to give him, to give him more than 100%. You yeah, see what I'm absolutely. saying? Yeah, and that's how good Vicky is. Uh, how are Vicky Paji? How are you doing preparation? Prep is doing good. Uh, George on my side, I have nothing to worry about. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy Prep is on point. Everything on point. Okay. And Vicky Paji, do you want to give your viewers a message? Message is that it. Uh, for the athletes, Work hard, man. I want more and more people to step on the Olympic stage from India. We have the talent. We have talent here, my boss. We got so much talent. But we need good coaches. The people, I know, I've seen uh, guys here. They, they do follow diet. But the coaches, they don't have that much knowledge. Like how to uh, improve certain areas during the off-season and stuff. Because off-season is a season when you grow and uh, drop a muscle, you know, you need more work when you work on the muscles. People here, they eat everything, everything, everything. For them, like, do, have a good coach, listen to him, do what he, uh, listen to him, and do what he tell you to do. How many coaches do backstage, Becky? Did you see any coach backstage? Not at all. And any coach, like any coach, he was running all over the place. Not only his guys. Other guys too. He's, he's helping. Indian athletes, he don't even know them. It doesn't even they like guys, you come along with me. So, who are they? He's telling this guy look better, move him in. Uh, watch a guy, he's gonna win the overall. Okay. Judges overlooked him. He wasn't in the top 10. Yeah, he yelled the number and then they called him and he ended, ended in, the, in the middle. And his guys were doing the same class. But he helped someone else because he know that guy got the talent. He worked hard. He should be in the middle. Exactly. You, you know, like, that's what we're talking about, the passion. If you don't have the passion for the sport, don't just do it, man, for the money. or, or the, you know. Everybody. Exactly. I have the passion. I love it. I look at people. I just, you know, you know, you know what I'm trying to say, man. A lot of people, listen, people, you know, the reason why I'm not super famous coach, you know why? 
And you're not going to believe it. Super famous. Because I'm humble. That's why I don't have millions of followers, because I'm humble and I take time and talk to everybody. If I was a stuck up, I'll have a lot more followers. Isn't that so weird? To show you how this world heading in the wrong place, man. No, what? we need to be humble. You know what I mean? And this is the best quality about you, man. Oh, thank you, brother. Yeah, thank you. We have athletes competing, but he helped more than 100 athletes backstage with the posing, with the diet, what with the oil, you know, with, with the oil. oil. Uh, if someone, you know, sweating a little bit, he's like, eat some salt and this and that. He helped everyone. That's what should be. That's everyone. what a real guru is. Because he know what hard work means. Yep. And at last, George. What are the future plans for Team Farah in India? You know what? I mean, I'm, I'm looking for anything any in any possibility to be able to help the Indian people just for one reason and one reason only. Because India, a lot of people don't understand this. Maybe India is the skinniest people in the world, but they're number one diabetes in the world. So they have a lot of problems here. And honestly, if I can pay it forward and like, People like Bicky and, uh, and, and uh, Junaid and all these guys, not only they're my clients, I make them become coaches because good leader have to create more leaders. It doesn't want followers, you know what I'm saying? And this is my plan, man. If I can pay it forward in India and make people healthy, this is gonna be my dream come true because we have over one billion people here and you need to help them out, man. So, this is the ultimate legend, Mr. George Farah. Taking the interview, signing out, thank you.